Good morning and welcome to church. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, let's begin our service. We're going to sing a song about inviting the Spirit into this space. Here we go. As we come back together, my name is Jeremy Grenhart, 
and I serve as the music director at Christ Lutheran in Bethesda, Maryland. I got a little crew with me. This is Saint Cecilia. She is the patron saintess of music. And I got my little plant crew and, and all of us gather here uh, in order to welcome you. So if you're an old friend, we want to welcome you back into this space and it's great to see you. And if you're new here, this is your first time watching the service or you just stumbled across it, we want to let you know that you are also most welcome in this space. There's really no exceptions. Everyone is welcome. And the way we begin our service is with a time of confession and forgiveness. And I explain this because not every church does it, but we take a moment on our Sunday mornings or whenever you're watching the service to evaluate our week. Maybe we think about the things that we have done or left undone that fell just a little bit short of the grace of God. Maybe that's a little thing, like you, like me, get, get mad at people when you're driving around in the city and you're like, what, what's this guy doing? And, and you're rude and you need to apologize. Um, or you have something much heavier on your heart. God wants us to know that we can bring any of these things to him and that we serve a merciful and forgiving God. And like we were just talking about, because uh, these things are different for each and every one of us, the practice that we've been observing while we're doing these online services is we just take a moment of silence to bring whatever is on our heart to the foot of the cross. So let's do that together right now. And as we come back together, God offers us some great news. Uh, and that is that all of your sins are known and forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, let's sing a verse of our Kyrie, which just means, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. Well, that's one happy tune, but it is now time in our service where we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the Word of God. So if you want to go grab your Bibles, now is a great time to do it. We're going to read a psalm today, and then we're also going to continue our journey in the Gospel according to Matthew. Alternatively, you are welcome to download the Order of Service, which has the readings that comes in a PDF along with the service. Well, here we go. A reading from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to his people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear Him. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me.
prayer of the day is this one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Think about that, that prayer about God being the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. And hear now this lesson from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Continuing the 18th chapter, we're continuing to read from Matthew. This begins at the 21st verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, for, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he, he said, Pray what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went out and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friend, um, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you're seeing this video worship service. My name is Richard Graham. It is a great honor and a blessing for me to be able to be part of these services. I wish you every good thing in your life in these difficult times, in these painful times. May God bless you and keep you and make you a blessing to others. And grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ, we believe, is the light of the world. He is the source of every blessing in, in our lives. He is, by virtue of his death and resurrection, God's greatest gift to the human race. Our Lord Jesus Christ is, is the source of all that we hold most precious. And our Lord Jesus Christ is a great storyteller. And one of the best stories that he ever told, I think, is this parable that we just finished reading from the 18th chapter of Matthew about the two slaves, one of whom owes a lot of money to a master and the other of whom owes a little bit to the other slave. Now, in preparation for this, sermon, I did some math. And I could be off about this a little bit. I'm not, uh, they, don't, they don't make pastors study a lot of math on the way through school, but I'm in the general ballpark with these figures. The slave that we first hear about owes the master 10,000 talents. Now a talent is actually a weight. It's about a hundred pounds of precious metal. So say a hundred pounds of gold. Turns out that in 
a pound of gold, there are only a little bit more than 14 ounces. For some reason, the way the world measures precious metal is, is different than the way it measures flour and sugar and normal stuff. An ounce of gold is more than an ounce of other stuff. So there are about 14 ounces of gold in a pound. So um, the day that I started preparing for this sermon, gold was selling at $1,934 an ounce. So 100 pounds times 14 ounces times $1,934 times 10,000, since we're talking about 10,000 talents, by my calculations, and again, I said I could be wrong, by my calculations, that comes to $27 billion, $76 million. Could be more or less. Price of gold fluctuates. Anyway, it is a lot of money. A lot of money. $27 billion in the ancient world. That was a huge amount of money. Turns out that the tax revenue required of the entire part of the world where Jesus lived, the amount of money that had to be paid in taxes to the Roman Empire in a year was 600 talents. So 10,000 talents, $27 billion. The slave who owed that much money to the master throws himself on the master's mercy. I'm so sorry, he says, I'll pay you. Well, maybe, I guess. But the master who has every right in ancient law to sell this man into, into perpetual slavery, he's probably a, a wealthy servant slave. There were those kind of people too in the ancient world. And, and put all his family in prison and sell his house and everything else. The master says, okay, all right. Um, I forgive you the debt, $27 billion. Then that slave goes out and on the way out meets another slave. And this other slave owes him a hundred denarii. Now a denarius, we know, pretty, we know more about this, a denarius was considered to be a fair day's wage for a um, semi-skilled worker. So we're talking about um, what, what would be considered to be sort of like 100 days worth of work. Um, I figured this out too, minimum wage in Maryland at the present moment, uh, the legal minimum wage is $10.10 an hour. You do the math, it comes to about $8,000, a little bit more, $8,000. So the comparison between the loans is between a humongous amount of money, what my kids would call a gazillion dollars, and $8,000, a moderate consumer loan, okay? But that slave, that first slave, who has been forgiven so, so much, can't turn around and forgive the other guy even a little bit. And he orders him to be thrown into jail, as he had the right to do. Well, the bystanders don't think this is fair at all, and nor do we. And the bystanders go back to the master and they say, look, this isn't right, how can this be? And the master, you remember, is angry now. The master calls the first slave back and says, I forgave you all that. How could you not be also generous to your fellow slave, a man who is essentially in the same position as you are? How could you not? And now the man goes into, into prison to be tortured until he can pay back the $27 billion. I think that's a great story. It's a little scary at the end, and I'll get to that. It's a great story, though, because it sticks in your mind. And the people who heard it in Jesus' day must have been thinking, holy cow, you know, that is, that's pretty impressive. You know, this follows on the question that Peter asks, which is, if someone sins against me, should I forgive him seven times? Seven being one of the biblical holy numbers and meaning a lot. That's a lot. If I forgive somebody who comes to me and asks for forgiveness seven times, I've done my duty, right, Jesus? Isn't that fair? And remember, Jesus says, no, no, that's not. I say 77 times, a much larger number of times. Forgiveness actually can't be counted. 
Forgiveness is a business of generosity of heart that realizes that when you try to add it all up, it doesn't make that much sense. And indeed, the $27 billion compared to the $8,000 doesn't make that much sense. But Jesus is saying, that's the way it works with forgiveness. Forgiveness just happens. People forgive each other the way God forgives, or they should. God doesn't count it all up. You ask God to forgive you, God will do that. Anyway, the two lessons here, one is this. You need to be forgiving. You need to count on the fact that God has forgiven you and you need to be forgiving of the people around you. We need to be forgiving. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's almost like the only thing, if you read this lesson, if you read in the Bible, it's almost like the only thing that makes God really angry is not sharing with other people the blessings that God has given us. And this is easy to talk about, but it's hard to live. All of us are, are programmed, we're born like this, we're programmed to protect ourselves. And one of the ways we do that is we make sure that people treat us right. And if they don't, we hold it against them. Our, na our nature is to, to count this up. We can be pretty forgiving sometimes, and other times, no, we cannot. And we say, which is, which is, is I think, wrong, we say, well, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. And that's also contrary to God's will. There's lots of places in the Bible where God says, you know, I remember their sins no more. People ask me to forgive them. I remember their sins no more. The, the image that we have of going to heaven and meeting St. Peter at the gate, and he opens this big book, and all our sins are listed in there, and we have to listen to them because maybe we'll get into heaven and maybe we won't, but we still have to, have to listen to the sins, you know? There's no book. There's no St. Peter at the gate like that. There's just God's mercy. And the image of the mercy of God is also in this, this parable. That's the second point here. What kind of king has the ability to loan a slave $27 billion and then just forgive it? What kind of king has that kind of resource to be able to give it away? That's the image of God that we don't hold close enough in our hearts, brothers and sisters. That's the image of God who is, is boundless in mercy, who is boundless in blessing. There's no limit to what God can do. And the limit that we impose on God, well, you know, I feel like I've done something that even God can't forgive. Some people say to themselves sometimes, that is just so horribly wrong. The image here of God in this story is of God as a great king, merciful beyond all measure, merciful enough to, to, to forgive this incredible debt, only expecting that the people who are forgiven so very much will be, forgiven in the, be forgiving in their own lives too. The central image of this after all, for us, for Christian people, is not a great king. The God we know best is not off in heaven someplace. The God we know best is the Lord Jesus Christ. The God we know best is the one who gives himself up for us on the cross, who dies for all of us, who dies for people who didn't have any idea who he was, he dies for people who hated him. He dies for all of us who hadn't been born yet. He does all this out of love and kindness and mercy. And then God raises Jesus Christ from the dead to show that that love and kindness and mercy doesn't come to an end. It goes on and on. And so does God's forgiveness and so does God's love. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is also our crucified and risen Savior. He is the symbol of how much God loves us and how much God forgives us every day, day in and day out. And if God is so generous, if God can do that for everyone, then let's tell people about that. Again, the only thing that seems to make God really angry in the Bible is, the, is when people, His people, try to hold His benefits close for themselves. May we never do that. 
May we follow the Lord Jesus in, in, in a life of service and love and kindness. May we follow God the Father in this incredible generosity. Think about this, $27 billion. Can we not forgive? Can we not forgive? Knowing how much we have forgiven, we can do that. We can do that. I pray that in this week ahead, you have opportunities to forgive the people around you. I hope it's just little things. I hope you don't have to think about anything that's really horribly deep and weighing on your soul. But if it is, if there is something like that, you know God will help you like that too. And so would I, and so would all your Christian friends help you with stuff like that. I hope that you have the chance to practice forgiveness this week. Because in practicing forgiveness, you come closer and closer to the heart of God. And God's heart is nothing but love and nothing but goodness. God wants to love us more than we can ever understand. And God's love is endless. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Graham. I, for one, am grateful to you for taking care of the math portion of our service. I don't think it would do anybody any good to put that particular ball in my court, so thanks. But seriously, that's a good word that we can basically just kind of lose track counting the number of times that we forgive. What a good word. Well, we're going to sing together one more time. Got a tune for you by Red Rocks Worship. It's pretty cool. I hope you dig it. And then we're going to move into the prayers of the people. Thanks for being here with us this morning. We're going to sing a song called All I Want. You sing along with us.
Good morning, my name is Taylor Lee and I serve as one of the worship leaders here at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church. And I invite you into our time of our prayers of the people. This is a special time in our service in which we bring the concerns and the celebrations of our hearts and minds to God. We invite you to take a position of prayer that best suits you in your space. And we ask our Lord to be with and connect with each other and with you. For our world. Lord, all of you have created in this world is inherently good. All of your creation was made to be beautiful in its own way. And we don't take nearly enough time to stand in awe of your work. From the tallest mountain to the smallest pond, we offer a thank you prayer for allowing us to stand witness to your glory. We know that mountains bow and seas roar at the sound of your name. All creation is yours. We pray you to con to protect us from natural disasters, such as wildfires, hurricanes, and tornadoes. Specifically, we pray for those in the Pacific Northwest states as wildfires continue to burn. Provide safe shelter and sustenance to those in harm's way and bring peace to areas in chaos due to unusual weather. Give us vision to see and faith to believe that our world can break from violence and greed. Let us pray that our world leaders gain inspiration to continue in working towards world peace. Allow global leaders to not act in fear, but more in wisdom and compassion. Bring more policies in place to break systematic injustices, to end suffering all over the world. We are six months into this pandemic. This is a long, slow battle. And we know that this is affecting everyone in every corner of the world. Help us to cope as individuals and as countries. And if it is your will, allow for cooperation among us to discover a cure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Shower the people you love with love. Open your heart in prayer. Shower the people you our community. Let us take a moment to give thanks for the gifts that he has given us. In our communities, we thank you for those entities that exist to serve others, such as hospitals, food banks, or homeless shelters. On an individual level, we thank you for the gift of life and freedom. Each morning we wake up as a blessing and another day that we can choose to live into purpose. If we each take a moment, there's so much more of these gifts that we can be thankful for. The gifts of peace, friendship, wisdom, health, etc., making life that much more meaningful. Thank you for providing all our needs according to your riches, Lord. You are worthy of all glory. <clears throat> we pray for our families as they, as many are experiencing a change, as many falls, as many schools switch to virtual learning this fall. This impacts families in so many different ways. We ask that you grant perseverance, patience, and adequate resource for families and to function and for children to learn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Shower the people you love with love. Open your heart in our church. We thank you for the church, Lord. We are one body in Christ and reflect you wherever we go. Allow our church to be effective and engaging mirrors of your love to each other and to the world. Help us to find meaningful ministries for partnership and stewardship in the surrounding communities. Lift up our church leadership as we grow and spread the good news to others. Lord, let this interruption in our trajectory lead us to new and better things than we could have ever imagine. Let our conversations and innovations come out of this time. Allow us to bring your word to our people who would have never otherwise heard it. Turn fear into thank you. Turn our trial into testimony. Use this time to change, to change hearts that we might give your name all the glory and the honor. We offer a thank you prayer for our ministry. We are blessed to have the means to connect with each other through this virtual worship experience. Continue to grow the ways in which we grow disciples and spread your kingdom here on earth. 
We thank you for our reader, Ajilta, Pastor Graham, for his message today. For those who share this service with family and friends, editors, musicians, organizers, and all others who put forth the labor of love to bring our worship experience to more homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Shower the people you love with love. Open your heart in prayer. Shower the people you love with love. Open your heart in prayer. For our people, Lord, we take a moment to pray for our loved ones who are battling illness. With social distancing in place, it can be very hard to help close family and friends who are sick. But now more than ever, it's even more important for them to know how much they are loved and cared for. Help us to find ways to encourage and lift them up. And Lord, give healing and strength to them that it might ward away sickness. We pray for those battling mental illness. It can take many forms, depression, anger, addiction, just to name a few. But through Christ, we have the victory to overcome the darkness we battle and does not have to be who we are. He gives us hope for a better future. In that same way, Lord, bring the necessary resources available to heal and give them strength. We pray for those struggling with forgiveness. I think I'm talking to all of us right now. You showed us the ultimate example of forgiveness by giving your own son to set us free, to set us free from sin. Your word tells us, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Help us to remember that we are not perfect when we find fault in others. Allow us to be more compassionate and show forgiveness even when others fall short, even when it may be hard. We now open up the virtual spiritual space for the prayers of the people free to take um, this moment to offer up any prayers that you might have either silently or loud up to God. Lord in your mercy, hear our song. all of these prayers, the ones we haven't prayed yet, and the silent meditations of our hearts at the foot of the cross. And we pray in Jesus' holy name and the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. Thank you, Taylor. Well, if you have prayer requests, don't hesitate to be in touch with us so we know what we can be praying for and who we can be praying for. Uh, you can contact me directly or you can also go check out our website, which is ChristLutheranBethesda.org. And there you might also explore the ways that you can serve our ministry or give to our ministry. It's uh, good to be both in service together and also living generously as a faith community. Well, let's sing together one more time before we end our service.
People of God, please receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>